Hey y'all. Hey, it's Saturday. Let's get something done. I'm thinking, I'm thinking van for a little bit and then the Mustang. Let's hop on the E350 for a little bit and put a front receiver hitch on it. So the E350 was a huge, absolutely huge success Memorial Day weekend for camping. Um, came out, well, let's just show you what we did. How it ended up for the weekend. Speaks for itself. Okay, so this is how we ended up for the weekend. That's a full-size bed frame from Amazon, which I bought off a of marketplace for 10 bucks. And a queen size RV mattress that was given to us. <laughs> so it was brand new still in the bag. Some people down the street from us um, had bought a camper and upgraded the mattress right away before they even used it the first time. So it was still in the plastic. Not the most comfortable mattress, but yet it's a queen size sitting on a full frame at the back of an E350. Just worked great. All right. Little table, a couple little outside tables. The uh, toolbox came in handy. It's just a Craftsman old bottom box that I yanked the casters off of. Um, and then, you know, the luxurious shag carpet. Anyway, felt good on the feet after a lot of bike riding and uh, kayaking. So, got the awning on. Didn't end up using the awning any on Memorial Weekend because we had lots of shade and everything was great. Um, last day, the shade was chasing us, or the sun was chasing us, but we ended up not popping it out. Um, the attic worked awesome. Uh, Two-person kayak up there, the inflatable, obviously. Um, couple other things life jackets the oars for the the paddles for the kayak um the chairs you know just regular camping chairs quite a bit of stuff up in there um worked out good so the thing was a huge success using that bed frame left us a little bit of room underneath for storage so some umbrellas, toolbox, you know, everybody needs a potty bucket just in case of emergency. And that little locker thing just freaking slid right underneath there perfectly. So, um, I have to plug the place we went to. Katie Roundhouse in Franklin, Missouri. It's a campground on the Katie Trail, right on the Katie Trail. The Katie Trail runs right through it. Franklin, Missouri, just a little bit north of Boonville. You can hop on the Katy three miles. You're in Boonville. Um, I think it's another maybe 10 or so. And you can be over at that winery that's right over in Rocheport um, that has some stuff right on the trail. You can go up. They have an A-frame that you can listen to music and, you know, drink and eat and have a good time. So what we're doing today, oh, as much as I'd like to be camping, um, we're gonna put the front hitch on this dude. So, and the reason I'm doing that is is multifold. Um, I want to be able to have a winch stored under the bed when I take my longer treks. So if I, Jax, Jax, Jack, Jax, not your camper. Um, so if I get in trouble, I got a winch. So it'll be on there for that. It'll probably mostly be used for my bike rack which I used last weekend in the rear hitch, but it's a little bit of a pain because if you've got the bikes on, you can't get the doors open and it makes it hard to get into the attic. So I think I will, um, I've been thinking about that front hitch for a while, mainly for the winch, but it's gonna come in handy for the bike rack. So hang loose, let's get this front hitch put on. It's a Kurt, I got it through Amazon. Um, supposed to fit E150 through 350. 33055 if you happen to uh, need one. But 
Let's check it first and see if it's gonna fit. Some drilling required. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Jax, you in? You ready to help? Are you ready to help? All right, let's do it. So it says to take off the lower of the lance. I don't like that idea. I want my lower of the lance on there. So we're gonna see if we can just trim around it because I'm sure we'll probably have to do some cutting. Actually, the lower of the lance on this model is everything. It's all one piece. So I'm definitely not taking it off. Um, but we'll see if I can get away with just a little notch and a trim. I'm hoping it comes out somewhere right around here. That way everything will fit nicely. This is um, not only a nice step when you're working on it, it holds lights. So there will be eventually a big, either a couple LEDs or an LED bar. I'm thinking about maybe a smaller one here and a bigger one up in here. And if that's not enough, I might put one off the top of the rack, um, the cargo rack on the front. I want some off the front, I want a couple off the back, definitely some off the side, under the awning. So if the awning's out, um, you can have a little bit of light. <clears throat> and then I'll probably even put some off the driver's side just in case. All right, get that hitch on there. Looks like she's really, really ready to help. Step one. All right, this thing has a, a lower shield, a plastic lower shield. So it's just got like four of those plastic center pin clips. Get those yanked out of there and then see what it's going to take. Um, it looks like it's uh, kind of incomplete. Like maybe, you know, something's taking a beating under here. So. We'll get those out of there. I'm not so sure. I think that is one of the bolts they utilize. This might be another one. Shoot, I don't know. It might be both of those. We're going to find out here in a second. All right, got the shield off. For those of you that maybe haven't messed with these, these clips are just a center pin um, clip. So you take your forked pry tool or something like it. You could use a screwdriver if you're in a pinch. And you just pry the center out and it pops out pretty much. Unfortunately, my lower shield is in a couple of pieces, but um, it'll still work. I may trim that up, make it look a little bit better and just cut that end off because it's broken anyway. So that opens up the underside. And here's, you know, we're gonna be bolting it straight to the frame. And I'm almost positive that's one of the holes. I'm gonna do some measuring and see if that one isn't the other hole. So, you got to fish the uh, the bolts, like a carriage bolt, inside there that drops down, and then you bolt to it or nut, you know, put a nut on it. But at least that's what the instructions say. But this bumper may have to come off. I don't know for sure yet, but I'm gonna douse that with some douse the bumper bolts with some WD just in case, and um, make life a little easier because I'm all about making life a little easier. Just be sure not to, you know, get it in your eyes. So, the safety third. All right. All right, let's see what we got to do. Um, do some measuring real quick. See which holes we have to use because you do have to drill open one of those holes. Um, it said in the instructions or maybe both of them. Um, so, let's see... Uh, Let's see what it says we gotta do. I'm gonna do some measuring, and then I'll set it up here on a jack and get it lifted up in this place, so I can see if it's going to clear. I mean, I know it's not going to clear the lower part. I just hoping that I can just trim out the spot, basically notch it for the receiver to slide up in there. We'll see. 
Okay, let me just say, Kurt Manufacturing, you got your shit together. I like it. So this is how it's going to sit. I've got it clamped up. I have to notch nothing. You can barely see the little hooks. The receiver, I mean, other than I might run some stuff over with it every now and then. <laughs> um, of course, if I do that, I guess I'm in trouble anyway because it still is up higher than the than the arms. So here's what we got. So we utilize the big hole back here. Um, sorry for my LED stuff. And we have to re-drill up here. Um, we use part of that small hole up in the front. But look at that. Kurt, you got your stuff together. I like it. Um, so what I think I'm going to do just for ease, I think I'm just going to unbolt the bumper. I mean, you got literally four bolts and this thing's completely out of the way. I can drill it. Then I don't have to fish the, the carriage bolts through there because I can put them through the hole in the frame rail, which I believe is there. I hope that plate isn't a solid plate in the front. I'm going to double check that. I got to get my flashlight up in that hole and see. But this should be, once I get that bumper off, if this is the case, pop me a couple holes, drill me the two, the hole here and the hole on the other side in the front, bolt this sucker on and be done. All right. <laughs> that's always how, you know, that's always the plan. Let's see if that's how it goes. So here's what we see when we take the bumper off. Easy access to put in the carriage bolts with the, uh, when I keep saying carriage bolts, let me show you what comes with the kit. So it's more than a carriage bolt. It's that um, block bracket that makes it so it can't spin back up in there. It'll spin and hit the frame and lock in one way or the other. So like I said, Kurt's got their stuff together. So I have to redrill this front hole, bolt that sucker up, and um, put the bumper back on. Literally, guys, four, four bolts, two bolts per side. It's actually fairly easy with one person to do this. So putting it on may be a little different story. But, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? I put a little scratch on the E-350. I'll be careful. All right. Let's do some drilling and get this thing bolted on. Hey, just a tip. When you're drilling this hole, this front hole, um, don't... <laughs> Uh, for lack of a better term, don't use crap tools. All right, get a new beefy bit. Don't try, it, you need a half inch hole. So don't try cutting through it, first of all, with just a half inch bit. Step up a little bit, you know, start a little bit smaller, cut through, step up through. Um, but make sure you got a good beefy drill and a good drill bit. Save yourself a whole lot of headache and everything. So I cut through it with this bit first. And then went to a half inch. So I stepped up a little bit. Made it a lot easier. Lube the heck out of it. Keep some oil on it or something. Because you're cutting through a frame. It's no thin piece of steel here. So make sure you got the tools to do it and you're ready to go. Save you a whole bunch of headaches. Still a mess. Um, you're still going to get um, shards of steel all over you if you're if it's hotter than Hades outside and you're wearing short sleeves which is not the smartest thing but hey got to get it done well here it is got it all drilled bolted on that's what it looks like in there when it's done since I drilled I sprayed some cavity wax stuff in there to help um just in case you know i wanted to rust or anything where i drilled i blew out all the shavings and everything so i think everything's good um so far so good i'm gonna slap this bumper back on here and if it fits like i did when i had it clamped up which it should logically then we'll be good to go all right let's see and the finished product I think Kurt Manufacturing, people that made this hitch, 
nailed it. Um, just in quick summary, I even put the, uh, before the summary, the plastic shield that I took out originally, I was able to get it back in there. It took some wiggling. And it used to mount, it had four clips in the middle, right in there, that attach it to the radiator support lower. And then it had two clips that attached it to the frame rail. Well, you can't put those back on. So what I did, uh, one of mine, well, both of mine were actually broken, but one piece hung out pretty far. So I just trimmed it down. It pretty much ends on each side uh, right in here now. So, which is fine. I wanted it back in there because I'm not sure if you can see there, but it does funnel air up towards the radiator and the AC condenser. So I wanted it back in there. Um, unfortunately, I can't, no matter what you do, you're not going to get the ends back in. Um, and if it's, you know, a regular Ford van that's had a probably fairly rough life, the ends were probably broken anyway. So trim them off if they're there and <laughs> do some wiggling. You got to wedge it way back and then slide it through and over those transmission lines that go to the uh, transmission cooler. But it can be done and it's not too bad. So, all right. Now, in summary of this dude, um, I paid... I think 167, 169 or something on Amazon for this. Um, and I think it was, uh, I don't know, man, I can't be any happier uh, as far as what it took to install it for a front hitch. It's got, you know, the regular two inch receiver and it's got these grab hooks, which they even show in the instructions to use, um, how to use them or how they come in handy when you're winching. Um, and you use a snatch block and stuff and you can take a lot of pressure off of your winch by utilizing these hooks. Plus they can be used for all kinds of other things. Um, so yeah, the summary of the uh, install is it's pretty basic. If you have a good drill and some good drill bits, you're not going to have a lot of problems, but the instructions don't say anything about pulling the front bumper off. They talk about pulling that lower valance off. Don't mess with that, man. It's got steel rivets holding on a plastic filler, which equal nothing but problems when you're trying to take them off. So take the bumper off, it's four bolts, comes right off. If you're careful, you can put it back on by yourself. Um, it just, everything worked out fine. Did it all by myself. All right, you got any questions, put them in the comments. I'll, I'll answer them, but otherwise, this is the uh, the end of the install. Let's get this thing back on the road.